They're funded by oil barons who correctly recognize the importance of propaganda, reactionary propaganda specifically. This is what they do. I'm saying it. Anyway, let's watch The Daily Wire's obsession with violence. Applications and is the site most read by teenage boys who use phone belt clips. If you don't know The Daily Wire, it was founded by the aptly named Jeremy Boring and Ben Facts Over Feeling Basic Humanity Shapiro, seen here winning a lookalike contest with Randall from Monsters Inc. The Daily Wire is mostly known for pushing right-wing ideas to a wide, diverse base of white men. Diversity absolutely means anti-white. No one's denying the downsides of global warming, or should be, but there are also some actual upsides. And I actually think that society would be safer if we discriminated more. But lately, the Daily Wire's boilerplate talking points have taken a darker turn. Execute all the, all the worst people, just, just execute them all. Over the past few months, the Daily Wire hosts have started calling for harsher and harsher punishments for their political opponents. The conviction is passed down, you're convicted, and then the execution is carried out the next day. The punishment for this obviously should be a lengthy prison sentence or death, as far as I'm concerned. So where is all this bloodlust coming from? To understand it, we have to talk about groomers. Not that kind, although it should be illegal. Grooming is the practice of an adult building a relationship with a child just to exploit them sexually. And for the past year, the Daily Wire hosts have been accusing LGBTQ people of doing just that, from railing against family-friendly drag shows. For the record, every single one of these people that makes that false smear, that hateful smear, that LGBT people, LGBTQ people are, are groomers and pedophiles and whatnot, are almost always openly and outwardly defending the practice of child brides, okay? Ask them what they think about child beauty pageants and child wives, and you will recognize, oh, they, they are the actual fucking groomers and pedophiles. Classic, actually, it's a phoebophilia sh they're abusing their children. They're sexually abusing their children by taking them to these events. Attacking trans supportive medical professionals. A child who is put on hormones is being sexually violated and their abusers are people like the doctor here. She's like a pedophile. That's how she should be treated. And freaking out about LGBTQ inclusive clothing sections and beer brands. So do not shop at Target or else you're gay and you're a pervert. Now these arguments may sound like someone who spends too much time complaining to their target manager, but this groomer panic has a very specific function and it's called stochastic terrorism. Outlets like The Daily Wire recognize you can't just call for queer people to be arrested or killed. That sounds too radical and you'd probably get kicked off a platform like YouTube. So instead you have to add a step. Accusing queer people of being pedophiles, then arguing that pedophiles should be killed or arrested. This is what scholars call stochastic terrorism, the process of associating marginalized groups with vile or disgusting acts in order to incite violence against them. Take this clip from Matt Walsh's show, where he complains about a pride parade float that included people wearing leather harnesses. In a functioning civilized society, everyone involved in that parade, really a combination of public indecency and child abuse, would be arrested and never let out of prison. So first he establishes a crime. A pride parade float with people wearing harnesses is child abuse. But in West Hollywood, where nearly half the population identifies as somewhere on the uh, gay spectrum, this passes for normal. And then he makes it explicit. This is what pride is. The whole crux of it is to target children. In other words, gay people are child abusers. And what do we do to child abusers? Call me a hardliner, but I think it is not unreasonable to execute child rapists. It's not just pride parades either. Here's Michael Knowles making the same argument about kid-friendly drag shows. I don't know. <laughs> the real white genocide would be occurring, unironically, if the American position was to execute actual pedophiles, by the way. Okay? White male genocide. You'd be ripping out half the, half the population of all these red states where there's child brides left and right. Half the Republican Party would be out, decapitated. Half the fucking pastors would be gone. The notion, the notion that, uh, you know, these guys actually want to implement the death penalty for child predation is ridiculous. They don't want that. They just want the death penalty for gay people. And the only justification that they can claim for that is by falsely claiming that all gay people are pedophiles. All queer people are pedophiles. I don't know how you can watch this and not conclude that the performers are pedophiles. They're abusing their children. They're sexually abusing their children by taking them to these events. Everybody said this is being normalized. This is being normalized. And that's true. This is a slippery slope, of course. The conservatives are always right about the slippery slope. 
Is there a way we could shut down the Daily Wire or do we have to waver them the f up? No, there is no f***ing up. They're just increasingly making their arguments more violent. There's no... The Daily Wire is a massive institution. They're funded by oil barons who recognize... Hassan Izabai is correct. They're funded by oil barons who correctly recognize the importance of propaganda. Reactionary propaganda specifically. This is what they do. All of this should be shut down by the heavy hand of the state. All of these people, other than the children, should be arrested. And here's Candace Owen talking about her plan of action if she just saw a trans person existing in public. It's not normal for somebody that is supposed to be a grown man to have a fetish about being a little girl. If my little girl was around a man that wanted to play dress up in little girl clothing, I would pull her away from him. I would probably call the police. This is, this is in a sane society, we would say, this is something that we cannot have. 911, I don't know how to be normal. But this isn't just about LGBTQ people. Daily Wire hosts have been using this tactic to call for state violence against a bunch of other groups. Here's Matt Walsh talking about executing people who sell drugs. We should be discussing much more severe penalties for them. Why do you think oil barons and these rich people fund anti-trans and anti-immigration talking points? Easy answer. The anti-trans stuff is a really, really good distraction. Every waking moment that you spend on trans people existing that you like lose sleep over is a moment that you're not thinking about why rent is so goddamn expensive. Is a moment where you're not thinking about how much more you should be getting paid for your job. Is a moment where, where you're not thinking about fucking oil barons basically personally destroying the fucking environment. And as far as immigration goes, there's even a more direct cause and effect. It's basically creating wedge issues that the culture that that uh, uh, wedge issues in the culture war that the public can hyper focus on, so that they don't talk about the real issues, the real problems, the real reasons as to why uh, material conditions are worsening for them. The Nazis did this too, by the way, against trans people as well. For the record, one percent of the population, eighty percent of the goddamn commentary. It's a great distraction, and trans people are mostly powerless in general too. And they're hyper marginalized. They're at, they're victim to the intersectionality of marginalization. They get hit from like every avenue, misogyny, um, and and uh, queer phobia. Not even one percent of the population. Sorry, one point seven percent of the global population is intersex. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like trans people, which is a much smaller percentage as well. You're right. Anyway, every fascist movement has done this. They've singled out marginalized communities and said that they are uh, a, a demonstration of moral degeneracy. That's number one. For immigration, immigration has to be illegal so that you can have basically slaves, okay? It's, that's it. Capital owners love illegal immigration because if, the, if it was legal immigration, then there would be no permanent underclass that you can exploit. Hello, baby. My baby woke up. Hello, baby. Mm. Yeah, but to be fair, Azan, you are rich, so you can think about these stuffs. We are poor and being played like a fiddle. That's why you do is important, because you break down this stuff for us. Smile. I try to do my very best with the privilege that I have. Before I had of, of my financial circumstances, I was still a straight, white individual who is relatively attractive. And I tried to use that position to break through the very common forms of propaganda that like the left is a hysteric a group of hysterics that are constantly whining about everything that hate fun well wow, someone's full of himself i don't want to die anyway as far as immigration goes if immigration is illegal people are still going to come in no matter what capital owners know this they rely on the two-tiered immigration structure so they can consistently refresh the pool of undocumented migrants. If those guys could document themselves, if they had a legal pathway to citizenship, or if they could legally be migrant workers, for example, then they would have access to legal recourse. They would be able to defend themselves in their workplaces. They would be not, they wouldn't be so easy to exploit. Immigration is also a double bind because while there is no a lump of labor, right? When there are more people coming into the country, there's more opportunities for, uh, there's more need for homes, there's more need for roads, there's more need for education. 
So there's more work that comes along with dealing with the new uh, group of people that are coming into the country. There is no way that immigration would depress wages unless there is a two-tier immigration structure. Undocumented labor does have the capacity to depress wages because there is a hyper-exploitable group of individuals that will always do the jobs for much cheaper because they have no other option. The best thing to do would be not to try and stop immigration because that's always going to occur regardless. And, and it's especially going to get worse, actually become a problem with climate change induced uh, necessary migration because agricultural output is absolutely getting eviscerated due to climate change in these places that have no infrastructure to deal with the change. Instead of allowing these people a fair process and a pathway to citizenship so they too can become a part of the documented labor force then that can then unionize alongside the natural-born U.S. citizens and naturalized U.S. citizens and have access to the same legal recourse and the same amenities. Instead of doing that, we keep fighting and, and otherizing these people as though they just like somehow are subhuman. Uh, the death penalty. Here's Walsh again on his preferred punishment for so-called false rape accusations. And I would be in favor of life sentences for those who falsely accuse someone of rape. Because to falsely <laughs> accuse someone of rape is just as bad as being a rapist. And they all love El Salvador's new mega prison, which is a facility that's basically hell on earth. We in the United States need to follow the lead of the government of El Salvador. You would think that America should look at this and applaud it and say, we... But why reward the illegal crossing? Did you not, just not understand that the designation of legal and illegal crossing is simply signatures on a piece of paper? None of these people would be illegally crossing if there was a safe and easily accessible pathway to citizenship. In your mind, and I ask this with all sincerity, in your mind, do you think that these people are like, well, I'm Guatemalan. And honestly, there is obviously a very easy and very simple way to get into the United States of America, but I hate the rules, and that's why I'm going to cross illegally and make a treacherous journey that could potentially cause serious bodily harm. Do you think that's what's going on? No, bro. We need a new way for this. Yeah, and I'm explaining the new way for it, which is to create a pathway for citizenship for all that is currently here already and to greatly ease access to economic opportunities in the United States of America by creating a pathway to work here legally. There's a reason why this conversation only works towards migration coming from the southern border and never towards migration coming from the northern border. It's because it's a much easier way to, to channel white supremacist rage and direct it towards these people. They're still people. They're still human beings with dreams just like you do, just like you have dreams. Anyone remember Carlos Gregorio Hernandez Vasquez, a.k.a. Goyito, 16-year-old Guatemalan who died in CBP custody in 2019? Here's a 2022 ProPublica report from a FOIA request on their internal investigation. You need this. You're supposed to suffer when you're in prison. There is no such thing as justice if you are not causing suffering to evildoers. Now, maybe you even agree with Walsh. Maybe you don't care what happens to evildoers who break the law. But that's exactly how stochastic terrorism works. Priming you to accept violence against people who disgust you so you're more willing to accept it for those who don't. Case in point, Jordan Neely. A Manhattan grand jury has indicted Daniel Penny in the chokehold death of Jordan Neely. In May, a black unhoused man, Jordan Neely, was killed in the New York City subway by Daniel Penny, a white former Marine. Penny was seen on a viral video from May 1st, restraining Neely in a chokehold for at least three minutes. Neely hadn't committed a crime, but didn't stop the Daily Wire host from treating him like a criminal. Someone that has 44 arrests over 10 years is someone to me that does not deserve another chance. Matt Walsh actually celebrated Neely's death. The community's better off without him. You're all safer now because he's gone. Michael Knowles celebrated Neely's killer. He should be given an award for valor. He should be given a key to the city. And Candace Owens used Neely's death to attack unhoused people. The idea that homeless people are just suffering and all they want is some food is complete and utter bull****. Yeah, when you're homeless, you just have different motivations. You don't even need food for survival.
You actually like being homeless. And the only reason why you're homeless is to fucking annoy Candace Owens at the subway station, which she, of course, never uses regardless, but fantasizes about uh, being harmed in that circumstance. Uh -huh. Nine out of ten times you are dealing with individuals that are drug addled maniacs. This yeah. No, nine out of ten times you have no idea that the person working at Walmart is homeless. Nine out of ten times you have no idea that the person that you're talking to is actually living out of a car. That's the actual majority of homeless people. The one out of ten times, however, is the homeless person that you see that has probably been homeless for many, many years and has suffered great damage to their brain as a consequence of being devoid of shelter, which is one of the most important things you need for survival, if not the most important thing you need for survival. And then, because that is a traumatic experience for you, that causes you to not even realize how much more traumatic it might be for that person to be in that situation, a victim of circumstance, okay? Without food, work, shelter, clothes, access to running water, things of that nature. So then you think, okay, well, everyone is like this. All homeless people are like this. And then you never even think about how that person became homeless to begin with or how that person became the drug-addled maniac, as she said. What are the conditions that cause that to happen? Why doesn't it happen with the same frequency and the same intensity as, uh, as it does in other places. Why is it that uh, the worse the housing market gets, the more this crisis seems to escalate? Perhaps there's something to, perhaps it has something to do with the fact that people simply cannot afford rent, for example. People simply cannot afford their homes. This kind of stochastic terrorism is going increasingly mainstream on the right. The Daily Wire has received significant mainstream attention, including profiles in places like the New York Times. And the Daily Wire recently announced a deal to stream its shows for free on Twitter, with Elon Musk endorsing Walsh's horrifically transphobic film, What is a Woman? There's a reasonable question to ask if you're on Jeopardy, and the question is, Matt Walsh is scaring this kind of person away from parties. Owens and Knowles both spoke at CPAC the nation's biggest conservative convention. Transgenderism must be eradicated from public life entirely. Matt Wall shared the stage with U.S. Senator Marsha Blackburn during a rally against gender-affirming care. There is a conspiracy to target and indoctrinate our children. And Marjorie Taylor Greene followed his lead after he directed a hate campaign at Boston Children's Hospital. Boston Children's Hospital is facing a barrage of threats tonight over a false social media post. Pride events across the country have been disrupted by fascist street gangs after being singled out by right-wing media. Violence against unhoused people like Jordan Neely has spiked in recent years as well, as has legislation that criminalizes homelessness across the country. And if all this feels unrelated to you, if you don't think this kind of rhetoric can lead to actual violence, consider the case of Dr. George Tiller. Dr. George Tiller, known as Tiller the Baby Killer, Tiller the Baby Killer, the notorious Tiller the Baby Killer. Before Bill O'Reilly got fired from Fox News for being the world's biggest creep, he spent months riling up his audience by attacking an abortion provider named George Tiller. Tiller aborts thousands of babies pretty much for any reason. Tiller the baby killer going, hey, oh I can make God. more money okay. killing babies now. O'Reilly never explicitly called for Tiller to be killed. In fact, he said he opposed it. If I could get my hands on Tiller, well, uh, you know, can't be vigilantes. Can't do that. Uh, it's just a figure of speech. But it didn't matter. After dozens of segments accusing Tiller of harming children, a lunatic walked into Tiller's church and murdered him. This was a symbolic killing, he said. Who I wanted to kill was every Democrat in the Senate. Remember what I said? The only other group of individuals I've ever seen in American history that are so violent and so vicious are anti-abortion freaks, like uh, akin to the uh, trans panic that you see. Sometimes they're the same people. Shia Rajik is doing exactly what Bill O'Reilly did back then. Perhaps if Bill O'Reilly was... Uh, at least received some form of punishment, some kind of recourse, some something, anything. Just like people being like, you're gross, you caused a doctor to get murdered. Perhaps then people would think twice about it, but of course, you know. And the House. Now, Daily Wire hosts are using the exact same playbook, using their claims to protect children as an excuse to normalize violence against a group that is already at risk. The only real 
recourse here, the only semblance of justice would be prison sentences. It's very long ones. Now, if it were up to me, we, you know, we'd go f further than that. But this kind of barbaric display in Kansas diminishes our entire nation. And Governor Sebelius is allowing him to continue the slaughter. Doctors and surgeons are performing these procedures to mutilate the bodies of our most vulnerable. One of the few doctors in the United States who performs the Hitlerian procedure known as a, a partial birth abortion. We're talking about Nazi scientist evil. We're talking about abortionist evil. I was in the courtroom. I didn't sit on the jury. Uh, but there's got to be a special place in hell for this guy. If we have this weird uh, rule that we've imposed on ourselves that we can only execute one either murderers or child rapists, I'd probably murder the, uh, I'd probably <laughs> execute rather, execute legally the, uh, the child rapist. Wonderful stuff. My food is here. Matt Walsh used to sell a, uh, a, a little toy for children of him, his gross ass in literal diapers, and his audience used to call themselves, and still do to a certain degree, uh, the baby gang or something? What do they call themselves? Matt Walsh also has said that 16-year-olds are their most fertile. Sweet baby gang is what he called uh, his audience. Matt Walsh has said that 16-year-olds are their, their most fertile is uh, an advocate for uh, child marriage, or at least has defended child marriage. But of course, he doesn't consider that to be... He doesn't consider that to be weird and gross and perverted. Anyway, the classic conundrum. Just, just how conservatives operate. 